High flying Hayabusa is, of course, famous for his various high flying maneuvers. And even if you don't follow professional wrestling, you have got to be impressed by this grace and movement. Sometimes in life, there will come a talent that is beyond most of their peers and just shines through as someone who is different and destined to be great. This label is slung around with less caution these days, but when this label was put on a young man from Tokyo with dreams of being a pro wrestling icon, he was able to exceed any expectation put in front of him and pioneer several styles of wrestling that are still being used to excite crowds to this day. Hayabusa was born Eiji Izaki in 1968 in Tokyo, Japan. From a young age, he was an athletic kid who loved watching professional wrestling. He trained in the FMW Dojo under coach Tarzan Goto and debuted in the Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling Promotion in 1990 at age 22. His small build made him easily slated as an underdog type on the bottom of the cards, but Hayabusa quickly stood out with his quickness, agility, and willingness to take risks. Atsushi Onida was overseeing his career at this point, and he saw a lot in Hayabusa, but he also thought he was in need of what people would call today an excursion. While in Mexico, learning the lucha style, he was trying to find something to stand out when he returned to his home country. He adopted the name Hayabusa after seeing a ride in a theme park with the name and made himself a mask. Even then, he was not standing out and had it not been for a lucky meeting with Rey Mysterio Jr., who agreed to train with him, things may have went very different. Rey was impressed and instantly befriended Hayabusa. Hayabusa was spending a lot of time not really being used in Mexico, so when he was told that he was being requested for the Super J Cup, he was beyond excited. He would then find out his bout was with Jushin Liger and at that point was so excited he couldn't even sleep the night before and almost missed his ride to the show the next morning. In a strange twist, the reason he debuted the Hayabusa character here was because he thought that if he messed up and ruined the match, no one would know or care that it was him. When you watch the match now, it wasn't perfect and it was clear that Hayabusa was still finding his way in the sport. However, there is something in the match where you can tell that you are watching someone who is eventually going to be great. Immediately after, he was right back to Mexico, but had taken a tape of his bout just to watch and prove to himself it happened. Not long after he landed, the offers began to pour in. Offers from Japan all the way to the World Wrestling Federation were put in front of him, but he remained loyal to Onita and FMW. Hayabusa had finally arrived. Over the next several years, Hayabusa rapidly rose up the ranks in FMW and became one of the promotion's biggest stars. He had managed to become what he had always wanted, and all of the hard work had began to pay off. In this time, Hayabusa won numerous championships, including becoming the first FMW double champion and truly cementing himself as the face of the company during one of the many times Onita would be saying he is looking to get out of the business and retire. As of this writing, Onita is currently a tag team champion with Yoshi Tatsu in All Japan. Speaking of All Japan, Hayabusa would even grace the ring of All Japan as a tag team partner of the promotion's founder, Giant Baba, as well as compete with legends like Kenta Kobashi, the Holy Demon Army, and Yoshihiro Takayama while teaming with his partner Jinsei Shinzaki, better known to American fans as Hakushi. He even managed to compete in the 1997 Real World Tag League. These two would be a team many would recognize for their match in ECW. What many may not know is just how prolific this team was at the time going from promotion to promotion, competing against the top names of the sport, regardless of promotional affiliation. As open as Japan is now to co-promotion, this was not the case during this time, and some credit these two with helping to break down some of the co-promotional barriers. It would be a huge omission to have a video about Hayabusa and not mention just how pivotal his bouts with Onita were 
to his career. Onita being the pioneer of being a wild man in Japan, as well as bringing death matches to the masses, was the leader of FMW, and he knew what he had in Hayabusa. Because of knowing that he would have been a fool to not make sure he and Hayabusa were to be put into one of his patented explosion matches together. Sure enough, this would happen in an exploding cage that some consider to be their favorite in the genre. The contrast of Hayabusa's style and Onita's style made very much for a precursor to what guys like Kenny Omega and John Moxley would later do in their exploding death match with one very big difference. Hayabusa and Onita's match had an explosion. Though it isn't talked about as much as other explosion bouts, this one is worth a watch if you are into that style. For every hero, there has to be a villain. For every John Cena, there must be a Randy Orton. For every Undertaker, there must be a Kane. And for every Stone Cold, we must have a Rock. So who was this for Hayabusa? Who was his big rival? Enter Mr. Ganosuke. The future Hayabusa, Eiji Izaki, born in Kumamoto on November 29th, 1968. And here we have the future Mr. Ganosuke, Masa Honda, born in Nagasaki, June 20th, 1968. And these men met on the campus of Kumamoto Shoko University in April 1987. And their friendship became closer and closer as they both learned they loved professional wrestling. One day, the two of them sat down together and watched an actual FMW tape, which contained one of their most deadliest death matches of all time. But to these two young men, it was an inspiration, and they decided that, yes, this is the way that we are going to live our lives. And the two of them journeyed to the FMW Training Center to take that next step into the world of professional wrestling. Zayzaki made his debut on May 5th, 1992, and Honda debuted in June in 1992. One day, Honda changed his name to Mr. Ganosuke, named after a movie character. And Ganosuke started to get recognition, sometimes being picked for main events, while Izake was still wrestling in preliminary matches. But while Izake wished his friend Honda well, Izake decided to try his craft in Mexico. And it was here that Izake became the man that we all knew later as the flying assassin, Hayabusa. In the mid-90s, Hayabusa engaged in a heated rivalry with fellow top star, Mr. Ganosuke. Their series of matches over the years became classics by the promotion standards and was a feud that would carry the company in many ways. In the lead up to the 10th anniversary, Ganosuke had turned on Hayabusa, tearing off his mask and gear. Mr. Ganosuke would then make appearances under the name Hayabusa while wearing the Hayabusa outfit. He would go as far as to film an adult video with Chocobo Mukai in the Hayabusa mask and shoving explosives where the sun doesn't shine. This would lead to Hayabusa dropping his name and simply going by H. He would no longer wear a mask to the ring and would instead have dyed hair and torn up jeans on. All of this would culminate in the 10th anniversary event. This was to be one of the biggest events FMW ever had, pitting on Hayabusa now going by his H persona against Mr. Ganosuke with Dr. Death, Steve Williams as the special guest referee. Rumors have always persisted about this situation, but what is accepted by most is that Dr. Death was reluctant to perform for another Japanese promotion out of loyalty to Giant Baba and All Japan Pro Wrestling. This put the WWE and FMW partnership in a situation and it is said that this is why after the brawl for all and all the rest, Dr. Death was let go by WWE. 
Unfortunately, this didn't really solve the issue as FMW now had no one to referee the bout. Enter Shawn Michaels. HBK had been one of the biggest stars of the WWF during the 90s and was about as big of a name as you could get for this. Factor in that having Michaels in the ring with Hayabusa and how much it would raise the stock of the company to have him and it seemed like a no-brainer. The bout didn't disappoint and having Shawn Michaels there raised the profile of the match even higher. This seemed like the makings of a Hall of Fame career that was just starting to hit on all cylinders. There seemed to be nothing that could stand in the way of Hayabusa and greatness as he had already accomplished so much so quickly. At this moment, it truly seemed the sky was the limit for the Phoenix. Hayabusa remained a cornerstone of Japanese wrestling into the late 1990s. He briefly retired in 1998 amidst bigger troubles in FMW, but returned to finally claim the FMW double title in 1999. Hayabusa's loyalty at this time cannot be overlooked, as while the company was in a downturn, he remained loyal and a staple of the promotion. Though many offers would come, he would turn them all away instead choosing to stay and continue to build in the promotion he believed in. Tragedy would strike during a match in 2001 as Hayabusa attempted a springboard moonsault and slipped on the ropes, landing on his head and breaking his neck. The devastating injury left him paralyzed from the waist down, ending his in-ring career. However, Hayabusa persevered through intense physical therapy and continued making public appearances, refusing to let the injury overcome his spirit. He became an inspiration to many as he adjusted to his disability. He still attended events to cheer on his friends and would meet with fans when he was able. Even though he had been dealt such a cruel hand, it was rare to see him without a smile on his face, as even in the circumstances he found himself in, he wasn't able to stop trying to inspire others and stay positive, vowing that he would one day stand in a wrestling ring again. Hayabusa's career ending sent a shockwave through all of Puro, but it more specifically had such an impact on FMW they would have to fold after years of struggling. Though his career was cut short, Hayabusa accomplished more in 15 years than most do his style inspired many future generations of wrestlers and was part of what many consider to be the greatest era of Japanese pro wrestling. He was one of the men who paved the way for Japanese wrestlers to succeed internationally. His matches are still considered classics studied by wrestlers today. After his injury, he attempted to begin a career as a singer. He also helped to promote a new wrestling organization called WMF as a tribute to the recently folded FMW. Even though he had lost the ability to wrestle himself, he was still an ambassador of pro wrestling everywhere he went. His influence cannot be mentioned enough, as even the person writing this script was deeply impacted and owes a lot of his interest in Puro to seeing Hayabusa being portrayed in WCW NWO World Tour on the Nintendo 64. I rented that game. I would often use the characters from DOA and the Independent Union and just thought they were cool. My favorite character on the game was the one named Hannibal. I would use him constantly and drop everyone with falcon arrows, but it wasn't until I found out that Shaolin in the game was actually Hakushi, who I had seen face Bret Hart and Black Belt was Taka who had recently won the light heavyweight championship that I realized that means that Hannibal has to be someone real as well. 
This realization was one of the biggest in my life for many reasons. The biggest reason of all is probably that I had just found out what Hayabusa was and for some in this audience, today will be that day for them. There are many moments that are talked about in hyperbolic terms and exaggerated as emotional moments that swear everyone in attendance was in tears just to increase the legend of the event. It is pro wrestling after all, and exaggerating is just the nature of things. One event that cannot be exaggerated is what happened in 2015. Hayabusa's theme song played, and the curtains pulled back at the top of the stage. Hayabusa would take in the cheers one more time. In this audience were legendary figures like Tenru, Kenta Kobashi, Tatsumi Fujinami, the great Muta, Hiroshi Tanahashi, as well as Dragon Kid, who he had grown close to and even made a song with, along with his contemporaries from FMW, all there just to see him one more time. Hayabusa would cross his arms and stand up from his wheelchair to cheers from the entire crowd. As he approached to enter the ring, a very nice detail is noticed of all of the people's well wishes written on the steps that lead him into the ring. It's subtle, but shows how much so many people cared about this man. There is no way to explain just how emotional this crowd was at this moment. As he approached the final step, Mr. Genesuke was there to meet him in the ring one more time. Hayabusa took his place in the center of the ring as a ceremonial 10 count was done. After this, he shared another message of never giving up and thanked everyone. Standing on his own two legs in the middle of the ring, the Phoenix had risen one more time. It is the kind of moment you never forget and it is one that will always be in the minds of the people he inspired and entertained for so many years. Unfortunately, this would be one of the last times we would see Hayabusa. Hayabusa tragically passed away a year later due to a brain aneurysm at just 47 years old, but his impact on wrestling will never be forgotten and his performances will forever inspire both fans and competitors alike.